A Colorado man told a uh, judge he understood he has been charged with the killing of his pregnant wife and two young uh, daughters and then hiding their bodies in an oil field as his father-in-law sobbed in the courtroom Tuesday. Christopher Watt, wearing an orange jumpsuit and cuffed at the wrists and ankles, answered yes, sir, to District Judge um, Mar Marcelo Cop Cop Copaco, formally advised him of the murder charges and that he could face life in prison or the death penalty if convicted of killing his wife, Sharon, 34, and their daughters, Celeste, and three, and Bella, four. Sharon's father, Frank Ruschek, Sr., wept uh, with his face in his hands. Sharon's brother, Frank Jr., rubbed his father's shoulders and glared un unflinchingly at Watts. A bailiff stood between them. Watts did not enter a plea at the first first degree murder charges, two counts of killing a child under 12, and one one count of unlawful ter termination of a pregnancy, and three counts of tampering with the deceased human body. Sharon's body was buried in a shallow grave in an oil field north of Denver, and the girls' bodies were dumped into a smudge-filled oil tank filled full of crude oil according to police arrest affidavits. Watts told authorities his wife had, had killed the children and then he, he then strangled her in the home, freely admitting to the mur original murder charge on her, but saying that he saw her on a baby monitor um, standing over the lifeless body of Bella and strangling the other child. Police first visited the home on August 13th after a friend asked an officer to check on Sharon. She had missed a doctor's appointment and wasn't answering her phone or text messages. Hours later, after returning to home from a business trip, the friend said, police searched, searched the house and found Sharon's cell phone stuffed inside of a couch. Her purse was on the kitchen and suitcase was at the bottom of the stairs. A detective uh, spoke with Watt and learned about his plan to leave his wife. He said he, him and Sharon had a conversation and was civil the first first time and later it became very heated and they were both crying as he said that he had, he had plans to leave. When she and the girls did not return home August 14th, investigators ramped up their efforts with help of the FBI and the Colorado Bureau of Investigation. Christopher Watt was interviewed by several television stations, saying he missed his family and wanted them back. It wasn't until last Wednesday night that he told investigators he would tell them the truth. Watts wanted to speak to his father first, then acknowledge, acknowledge killing his wife. In court papers released Monday, investigators said they learned that Watts was actively involved in an affair with a co-worker something he denied in earlier conversations and later with police. According to Watts' account, on August 13th began with an intense conversation. He said he told his wife he wanted a separation, then walked downstairs and left. When he returned, he said he stopped, um, he spotted a baby monitor on his wife's nightstand and saw her actively strangling Celeste. He said he it also showed his lifeless daughter, Bella, laying sprawled out on the bed in blue. Chris said he went to, into, a, into a rage and ultimately strangled Sharon to death. The document said police found surveillance video of the, from a neighbor's home showing Watts' truck backed into the driveway at 5.27 a.m. Then driving away from the house, Frederick, a small town of a grassy plains north of, of Denver, where fast-growing subdivisions intermingle with drilling rigs and oil wells. Watts, who worked as an operator at, at Dartco Petroleum, said he loaded his wife and daughters and bodies into the back seat of the truck, then drove to the oil field about 40 miles away, east of the family's home. He buried Sharon's body and dumped the girls inside the oil tank separation documents filed by Watts defense attorneys last week said that the girls bodies were submerged in a crude oil for four days before police found them later Thursday 
their mother's body was found in a shallow grave next to the tank. The court filings say Watts gave, gave police an aerial photograph and identified three areas where the, he placed the bodies. Investigators searched with a drone and spotted a bed sheet that matched one of the linen sets from the home and a freshly dug um, or, or disturbed dirt. Sharon's social media accounts were filled with photos and videos of the girls playing with her father and the, and the couple smiling. They were married in North Carolina less than six years ago and moved to Colorado soon after. District Attorney Michael Rourke said Monday that it is too early to discuss whether he will seek the death penalty in this case, regardless of extreme public outcry on this, on, in this matter. Watts will next be arraigned in court November 16th. It's got to be hard to... I, I don't I don't know where where you go from here. Did he did he kill his wife? Did he kill the children? You know, at this point, he may be, you know, admitting to killing his wife and denying that he killed the children, hoping that he can get off on on that charge, and uh, maybe they they won't seek the death penalty for him. I don't know how anybody could ever kill a child. If he killed his wife, he knew she was pregnant. That's a given. That's a proven in text messages from before. Before any of this all ever happened, weeks before, he knew she was expecting a, their third child. So he knew he was killing the, his wife and his unborn child. Oh. In conclusion of uh, today's update, I don't know how anybody uh, could ever hurt a child. You know, as, as a father myself, I, I couldn't do it. I could never hurt one of my children or put one of my children in, in the way of harm. Well, but you know, he, he knew if, if he if he's freely admitting that he killed his wife, he knew she was pregnant from, the, you know, prove, that's proven weeks beforehand in, in text messages. He knew she was expecting their third child. If he killed her, he knew he was taking the life of his unborn child. There's no way around that. Do I think the likelihood is that he killed the two little girls and her? Yeah, I do. I think that he either snapped or he, you know, he let the pressure of his life get over overwhelming, and he didn't know how to get out of it. Now, I've I've seen some statements online that were leaked on uh, why he was fired from the oil company, and if they those are right. I'm not going to get into him too much, but if they are right, he was having an affair with a co-worker, and he knew full well that it may lead to the premeditation of it all. So, I'm going to end it there for today, because it's really hurting my voice to talk. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get another video up this week with, with my voice like this. And hey, thank you for sticking around and listening while I, I talk today. Now, um, tonight's uh, podcast you know, has been uh, canceled. We will not be doing it because I, I can't keep on talking and, and I'm going to destroy my voice. So, all right, you stay safe out there, America.